Hello, I'm the critic. I remember so you don't have to. Today we're gonna talk about Marvel's Great Depression. Not an actual Great Depression, I mean Marvel's Noir, which was set in the years of the 1920s and 30s. Now for those of you who don't know why the 1920s or 30s were so important, well, some background. You see, the 20s was also known as the Roaring 20s, because the rich got richer and the poor... Well, got poor. <coughs> and because it was getting... Because the money was so high, the highest it's ever been, what comes up must come down. So the money had to come from somewhere, so once it all wept, poof. The Great Depression happened, which was a time in our history where everyone was poor, including the rich. So this is where our story takes place. Marvel's Noir. Now why am I talking about this? Because I talked about it later, and because I talked about it earlier in one of my other videos, you can try to find that. I talked about three. Spider-Ham, 2099 Spider-Man, and this one. I just said how I felt about all three, but today we're just going to talk about one of them. Noir. Now this one takes, <coughs> takes place during the Warren 20s and the After Fact. <coughs> so you'll get a little bit of both. Why am I talking about both right now? Well, I just felt like it. But today we're going to... Today I wanted to start a new portion of the show that I like to call... Little, little minor character, which was essentially where I talk about a minor character from a certain series. Today we're going to talk about Joseph Lorenzini, aka Hammerhead. Why am I talking about Hammerhead? Because I want to. Now Hammerhead, for those of you who don't know, was essentially a 1920s gangster in himself who fought Spider-Man using his head. Yes. You heard that right. A 20s gangster, or I guess he lives for a while since he's in the actual Spider-Man continuity. Don't know if he's dead yet. I haven't read Marvel Comics in a while, but I do like Stan Lee. And yeah, so he's running around in the 1920s. I don't know, he talks like a gangster. He's essentially, he's essentially an homage to like all those 1920s gangsters. So, yeah. The idea of him being in noir isn't such a far-fetched idea. In fact, it's funny and perfect. Because he already has the entire stick down. Why don't you just give him some more room to stand on? What I like about him is they don't have to change him too much. They only have to change him to fit in the world that he's in. He's not going to be in the real world. He's going to be in an alternate universe. Oh yeah, and for those of you who don't read comics, DC and Marvel, both of my favorite companies, they like to mess around with universes, alternate universes of their characters. Like sometimes you see Spider-Man in the way future with flying cars, or sometimes you see him in the past with gangsters. Same thing goes with Batman. You could see him fighting Jack the Ripper, the famous 1900s killer. Or, you could see him in the future, as Terry McGinnis. So yeah, why this specific? No, no, just felt like it. I will be talking about every character. And I'll be saying which is good which is bad. First up, Joseph Lorenzini. He was fine. He was kind of hilarious. But if you want more links, I will show you to the links below. Of my two favorite Let's Players who play through this game called Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. That's it, but next up, Felicia Hardy.